Newlyweds Ali and James Chapman always had their eye on the Leicestershire village of Wimeswold as a place to start married life. But actually owning a house here was out of the question. That was until a patch of land came up for sale on the edge of the village for just £25,000. The catch? It came without planning permission. We just thought it was worth taking a punt on it because we're, we're young enough that if it didn't work out, we could have tried something else. Yeah. We'd have had no money. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, the gamble paid off when two months ago, travel consultant Ali and civil engineer James were granted permission to build. Ali and James are building a traditionally styled three-bed cottage. It's going to have an oak frame with clay tile roof and off-white rendered walls. Inside will be more contemporary. On the ground floor, there'll be a front-to-back open-plan kitchen diner with a separate lounge to one side and a utility room to the other. Upstairs, there'll be two small bedrooms and their master bedroom suite with views out over the countryside. So you spent how much on the plot? 20... 25,000. But what else have you spent to get planning? What's it cost you to get to I this? I think day? about another 5,000. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. So 30,000 for the plot. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, isn't it? It's cheap. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely cheap. amazing. And what is your build budget? It's 220. Okay. For everything. So that's a nice around quarter of a million quid. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's worth when it's finished, or will be worth? Three, seven, five, four hundred, yeah, possibly. Yeah, thereabouts. Houses of that, that sort of size in this village do go for about that price. Should we okay. say three ninety? Yeah, thereabouts. Ali and James's shrewd work to snap up a cheap, unfancied plot and then get planning means they could end up with a home worth around £140,000 more than buying a similar property in the village if they can stick to their build budget. Now, 220 is not a crazily small budget, but it's not enormous. Mm -hmm. And actually, you're choosing to build in quite an expensive way. Mm -hmm. If you were to not have an oak frame building, but to have a more of a sort of a timber frame, more of a traditional timber frame building, and then use some oak internally, as principal trusses or to make floor joists and you know, to add oak on the inside, I think you could probably save a significant amount of money. You're looking very <laughs> underwhelmed by that <laughs> idea, aren't you? What worries me about that is the, the feel of the house. And because this is going to be a house that we're living in for 10, 15, 20 years, mm. I kind of want the house that I want. I don't want to compromise on it. It's May, and only a month or so after the oak frame went up, the initial wall panels are in and the roof timbers are going on. So it's brilliant to see it all coming together and actually start to see the house taking shape, but we have still got a couple of issues that we need to resolve, and it does look like things are going to have to grind to a halt. In order to access their plot, Ali and James need to use a section of private road. Now, they thought they had permission for vehicles to use it, but it's looking like they don't. And getting the vehicle access rights will mean negotiating a payment with the landowner. We didn't think it was going to be a problem because we actually had the right of access registered in the deeds by the land registry. Um, that's when we got the mortgage approved and that's when we pushed on with the build. Unable to reach an agreement with the landowner, Ali and James opt to take the case to a land registry tribunal. But this uncertainty means their next staged mortgage payment, earmarked for essentials like windows and a roof, is being withheld by the bank until the issue is resolved. So work on site is about to slow to a snail's pace. It's really frustrating, and because it's so exciting to see it getting to this point, um, it's really annoying to think that such a stupid thing could stop us, um, and we don't know for how long at the moment. It could be a matter of weeks, it could be months. Summer. And at long last, the glorious shrill cry of drill and dull thud of hammer fill the Leicestershire skies as work on Ali and James's site cranks back into life. It's so nice to just be started again and actually see 
it's just things such happening. A, it's just such a relief, isn't it? Yeah. Just to not have to worry about it, worry about that when, you know, are we ever going to finish this house? After further legal advice, Ali and James agreed a settlement with the landowner to secure vehicular access, avoiding the need for the tribunal hearing. We were a day away from going to court, so it was, it was a bit dramatic. It was completely, dramatic. completely down to the wire, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it was, yeah. It was stressful. I think we had to look at the bigger picture and say, was it worth it? Because we didn't know, we could have gone to court and lost, and lost everything. For a relatively modest, polite house, inspired by traditional architecture, built in a traditional way, this has been an absolute epic project. It's taken three years to get to this stage, three times longer than they at first planned. But two weeks ago, they managed to move in after a couple of months of Herculean effort. They are finally living inside their precious oak frame. I can't wait to have a look around. Ali and James have accomplished their long-held dream to build a stylish oak-framed cottage. Getting here has been tough. Their resolve tested at almost every stage of the build, but they've done it. And inside is a beautifully furnished four bed, two bathroom home of deceptive grandeur. Hello. 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 <laughs> it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? It has a bit. Hasn't Very good to see you. Very good to see you. You're in. Does <laughs> yeah. it still feel a bit surreal? Yeah, very surreal. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's, it's nice, like, though. It's, nice, it's, it's nice to come in. I mean, it's a really generous entrance space. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite a wow, I think, when you walk in. Ali and James's striking double-height entrance hall provides the first glimpses of their precious oak frame. Pendant lighting, a simple modern stair, and my idea to pair back oak touches create a bright and homely welcome. Stepping through to the double-aspect, open-plan kitchen dining area, the characterful timber really comes to the fore. You know, much as I am a sort of try to persuade you out of it, it doesn't look very handsome, the frame. I don't it's get me nice, wrong. It's isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's nice. It would have so saved a lot of hassle, I think, yeah. if they hadn't have had it, but... It's the first thing people mention looked. when they come in there, yeah. and everyone wants to touch it. Yeah. The cottage vibe carries through to their living room. With a feature brick fireplace and wood burner, slate hearth, and a textured wool carpet. Ah, very cosy. Yeah. Very sort of snug. I can imagine with a fire on, this is going to be a wonderful little warm space. And even more oak in here. Yes. Upstairs, simple tones and materials are found in two comfortable guest rooms, plus a playful bedroom for one year old Harry. Whilst tongue and groove panelling, a roll top bath and a large walk in shower create a luxurious and relaxing bathroom. Next door, in their plush master bedroom suite, it's all about those country views, enhanced by French doors and a Juliet balcony with a contemporary glass balustrade. That's such beautiful landscape out there, really kind of the sheep. It's, it's wonderful. Very, it's very unique, isn't it? Has that been a bit of a surprise? It was a bit of a surprise, actually. Until yeah, yeah. the frame went up, we didn't realise what we could see from this level. In the end, £25,000 for the plot was remarkable value. But from empty field to finished home became a three-year odyssey instead of the 12 months they'd originally planned. And their build budget took a big hit too, partly down to the access issue, but mainly because of their build method. You wanted to spend 220,000 on on actual construction costs. What did you end up spending? It was 285. Do you have a sense of what the oak frame has added to the build budget? I think it's probably added 50,000. Yeah. Not just the oak itself, but the intricacies of everything else that has to be done around it. It adds it adds time and labor. Has that been problematic for you to sort of find that money and finance that money? Yeah, it has, yeah. Yeah, cash flow has been really hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a constant battle. You spent in total about 
15,000, I think, something yes, like that. that's right. Yeah. Do you know what it might be worth? The valuation was 550 to 600. That's so, good. <laughs> yeah. So that's between 235 and 285 thousand pounds worth of equity or saving that you've made in, in building this house. Mm. So it makes a bit of the last three years <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has starting to pay pay back now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's in incredible. We didn't expect it to be worth no. as much as that. No, that was, a, that was just a nice surprise to finish the whole thing off, I think. I'm amazed at the sort of depth of sort of resources that you've pulled on, your resilience and when everything seemed to be as bad as it could be with all of the issues around the access and yeah. you know, all of this, all of these things, you still seem to hold it together and keep going and I know it's very easy to lose it when, when things are that dark. So, uh, you know, massive respect. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you.